in the Old Testament among what are called the Minor Prophets. It's a great little book by Amos. Now, Amos was, um, a, we could say, a lowly person. He had no standing in society. He was a shepherd. He was a herd, herdsman. But also, he was a gatherer of sycamore fruit. Now, that's quite a resume. Uh, that's impressive and would be to this world. Yet God reached down and chose that um, minor, it seems, person to say some of the most lofty things in Scripture. Amos is a great book. And there's a little phrase, very short phrase, in the fifth chapter, sixth verse, just simply says, Seek the Lord that you may live. Seek the Lord that you may live. The verse goes on and says, describes the kind of destruction that the Lord is about to bring on Israel for their rebellion against him. And it's an alternative. We have a choice to make. Seek the Lord and you'll live. Reject him. And God tells them, he says, I'll strike you with a blow. I'll, I'll dispossess Israel of their land. I will destroy you because of your rebellion. Rather, God says, seek me and you'll live. Now the world today, of course, has a completely different uh, definition of what it means to live. Today, living is owning all kinds of things, all kinds of leisure, riches, fame. We think people read avidly, People Magazine, they're reading about the, the various celebrities, and, and they see them jetting off to one of their five homes, and everyone thinks that is living. That isn't the way God thinks. That isn't the message he sent through Amos. You seek God and his favor and his likeness in my heart. You'll then experience true living. And what is that living? It involves several things. One, it's a life of freedom, true freedom, not the freedom that may come with fame and riches, but the freedom from guilt, the freedom from bondage to sin, freedom from shame, the freedom from um, a tendency within our hearts to always go the wrong direction, freedom from the consequences of sin that invades our life and destroys us. This is true freedom. Second thing that is part of really living is fullness. Fullness of an abundant life. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and might have life more abundantly. We're not talking here again about physical possessions but the, the life of the fullness of God's blessing, the fullness of the Holy Spirit inhabiting our hearts, the fullness of God's presence, comforting, guiding, directing, supporting, upholding us, encouraging us. This is fullness. If we want fullness, it comes from God's intended purpose when he created us was as a place of his habitation of his spirit, my heart. So we experience fullness. Seek the Lord that you may live involves being full, the Holy Spirit. Third, it's a life of faithfulness. There is nothing worth trading away the knowledge and the assurance that I am, I am obeying God. I have his favor. My conscience is clear. I am faithfully following God. That is a that is true riches to have the knowledge. I'm being a faithful servant of God. And of course, Jesus said the greatest words we can ever hear are at the end of our life, at the day of judgment, well done, good and faithful servant. And then finally, there's a life of fruitfulness. Now, fruitfulness here spiritually means that we, we accomplish things 
um, for the Lord, for his kingdom. And I add here, I think a lot of times we probably don't know the extent of our fruitfulness. And the devil is very faithful to beat down every single solitary Christian by telling them, you know, you, you don't amount to much. Um, what have you done for God? How have you amounted anything for God? Well, we have to wait for that till judgment. Judge nothing before the time, the Bible says. But we will find out, I believe, almost invariably, that where we thought we didn't amount to anything or have any impact of our lives for God's sake on other people, we'll find out that that wasn't true. That through God and his grace, much of it hidden, we bore fruit. And that's pleasing to God. So, seek the Lord that you might truly live. Father, help us do that very thing and leave to you the defining of true life. In Christ's name, amen.